Americans. By that time, drugs was what he was living for. And uh, the only one that could help Frankie was Frankie. But Frankie seemed helpless in the face of his addiction. He still managed to hustle appearances here and there, but by age 20, any chance of reviving his glory days was long gone. He just didn't have the voice. They would have to change the key, maybe five notes down, and it would sound horrible. So when Frankie did things on TV, he would always lip sync towards the end. Lyman's performance on the Hollywood Go-Go television show in 1965 revealed just how far Frankie had fallen. He was missing a tooth, his skin was in bad shape, and he was forced to have to lip sync. It was sad for most of his fans to, to witness. Soon, Frankie was selling everything he could to finance his habit. Former manager Morris Levy gladly grabbed Frankie's publishing rights to Why Do Fools Fall In Love for a measly 1500 bucks. And then when Frankie's money ran out, the fallen star resorted to petty theft. In 1966, Lyman landed in front of a judge who made the 24-year-old farmer phenom an offer he couldn't refuse. He was given the choice to get off the streets or are we going to, you know, put another kind of uniform on you. While he was in the army, he was stationed in Augusta, Georgia, and he met a woman there who was a school teacher who he felt could help to turn his life around. And that woman was Amira Eagle, who became his wife. Frankie and Amira tied the knot on June 30th, 1967. For a while, it looked like marriage in the military had the former child star singing a new tune. When I met Frankie, I, there was no sign of drug use when, I, when I, he was with me. We discussed this, and I, and I told him that I would not put up with it. But being on stage was one drug Frankie couldn't give up. He entertained around here in nightclubs part time. Whenever he would go out to sing, people asked him to do, hey, Frankie, what about doing How Why Do Fools Fall In Love? He tried, but he could no longer do that. So he, it was kind of frustrating to him also at that point. By February of 1968, after only eight months of marriage, 26-year-old Lyman was itching for one more shot at the big time. Frankie went to New York uh, because his manager called him. He had a weekend job, so he did not want to go by himself. He didn't want to leave me. Maybe the singer knew what was waiting for him. Lyman was drawn back to New York by his obsession to perform, but in the end, his other obsession took over. I think that uh, Frankie was about to go into the studio to record a new song and I think the night before he was in his grandmother's apartment and uh, he shot up and he died in the bed on the floor I often wonder if he had not elected to try to come back to New York and try to, to re-energize his career if um, somehow he would still be with us I've often said over the years that if Frankie were still with us today he would have been our generation's Sammy Davis Jr. He would have been the, the darling of, of the Vegas strip because he had that kind of talent. I think he would be like, like Nat King Cole. I mean, Frankie would be as great as Frank Sinatra Patty lived. Frankie's demise wasn't the end to this sad song. Why Do Fools Fall In Love made Lyman's name worth millions after his death. Up next, Frankie's widow tries to collect and finds out the hard way about her late husband's love life. Frankie Lyman was 26 when he died flat broke on a bathroom floor in 1968. By 1981, two of the other four members of Lyman's group, the teenagers, were also dead. But there was one thing that never missed a beat. The song, Why Do Fools Fall In Love. Why do fools fall in love? So the song came back around and was used in a, um, a Hallmark greeting card commercial. Then it was used in American Graffiti. But it wasn't until Diana Ross re-recorded Why Do Fools Fall In Love in 1981 that all of a sudden people suddenly said, where's all that money going? Not to Frankie's widow, Amira, that's for sure. Frankie's former manager, Morris Levy, controlled the song. But although Frankie sold off his publishing rights to Why Do Fools Fall In Love, Lyman was still listed as the song's co-writer which entitled him to royalties. We went to Mr. Levy and asked him for the royalty, and this is when the bell started. He said, no, I'm not going to give it to you. We decided we were going to court. But Levy had a notorious reputation for playing hardball, and he came up with a surprise for the would-be widow. And then this is whenever he said, oh, I'm sorry, but you are not the legal wife. Frankie has, well, Frankie had 
two other women, two other wives. So, and then therefore, that they came on the scene. Levy found two other women who Frankie had apparently married and never divorced before he met Amira. One of Frankie's wives was Zola Taylor, a former singer with the Platters. Actress Vivica A. Fox portrayed Frankie's other wife, Elizabeth Waters, in the 1998 film, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? I think Frankie was messy. He was. He, he was a mess. He, he was young, you know, but that was his way, if, if things got kind of rocky, he thought that that was his way of holding the couple together, his way of making her feel good, like, baby, you know I love you. I love you, girl. I'm going to make you my wife. But he forgot to get divorced a couple of times. Why do fools fall in love? In this case, for the money. Instead of paying Amira Lyman millions in back royalties, Levy allegedly struck a deal with Waters and Taylor, agreeing to pay a paltry $20,000 to the woman who could prove that she, in fact, was Lyman's legal wife. The infamous Three Widows trial began in 1986 and dragged on for two years. Eventually, Lyman's marriage to Zola Taylor was deemed a hoax, and Zola's claim was thrown out. That left Elizabeth and Amira. Chuck Rubin of the Artist Rights Enforcement Corporation assisted Amira Lyman with her case. Eventually, a ruling came down that uh, Miss Waters did actually have a common law relationship with Frankie in Philadelphia, and therefore she was a winner. But the Court of Appeals didn't look at it that way, and uh, it was like three zip in favor of Amira. Ooh, wah, ooh, wah, but this game of musical chairs wasn't over. Remember, the song Why Do Fools Fall in Love started out as a doo-wop ditty that was written by all the teenagers before they were even discovered. Though years of double dealing left their names off the writing credits, the two surviving teenagers wanted a piece of the action. They said they felt that they were entitled to um, their share of the song, Why Do Fools Fall in Love. They said because Frankie did not write all the, all the song by himself. They said it was not his, it was the, the group. We went to court. We had the, the, jury, the jury right there, the 12 jurors, and we won the case straight up. They went to the appellate court and appealed our federal court win. Our win was reversed a couple of years later. When the dust finally settled, Amira netted a million and a half dollars from Frankie's royalties. The teenagers didn't get credit or cash for writing Why Do Fools Fall in Love, but their contribution to music was acknowledged in 1993 when Frankie Lyman and the teenagers were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Getting into the Hall of Fame is a great feeling. I'm glad that it's finally here. I feel very good about it. And original teenagers, Merchant and Santiago, continue to perform with friends Jimmy Castor and Bobby J as an updated version of the teenagers. But all agree that there will never be another Frankie Lyman. Frankie was such a superstar. I mean, he was the natural born star. If you took him out of the 50s and put him into the 90s, he would blow everybody away. There were so many um, entertainers we have today that say, hey, I learned so much from, from Frankie Lyman. When there was a question about Frankie getting a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, people had to write in. The greatest of people wrote in. Johnny Mathis, Robert Guillaume, Louis Belson, Madonna, Billy Joel. So what he contributed, he still contributed. Frankie Lyman may have lived fast and died young, but no one can deny that he and the teenagers left a lasting mark on rock and roll. I'm A.J. Benza. Join me the next time we take a stroll down the flip side of the Walk of Fame.